Good morning. It's a beautiful Wednesday morning and welcome to our daily morning prayer and power words. It's 3.27 a.m. Los Angeles time, October 21, 2020. It's a beautiful Wednesday morning. Welcome to LA First Filipino Church of the Nazarene. Let's start with our morning with a verse about prayer. In Psalms 18.6, in my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. You see, prayer is the power bank of our daily journey. It's a soul refresher. It's a stress reliever. It, it's a means of communication to God. And for us in LA First Filipino Church of the Nazarene, it's, it is the backbone of our ministry. We're doing this for us uh, in our leadership to teach, to coach, to uh, encourage our people, our flock to pray. Our expected results would be selflessness, you know, uh, teach our people how to pray, to, for them to form a habit of praying. As a pastor, it is your basic responsibility or responsibilities uh, to teach your people how to pray, teach them how to read the Bible, and um, teach them how to feed themselves using daily devotions. So let's start. Speaking of daily devotions, let's start with our power words this morning. So what are our verses for our power words? It says here, by God's grace and only by His grace, we can respond to anger in Godly way. So it means that we're talking about anger, anger, danger. Slowly, we must respond slowly, be slow to anger. A man of quick temper acts foolishly no? in James 1.19 and Proverbs 14.17. Or we can respond calmly. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Proverbs 15.1. We can also respond lovingly. Love is patient and kind. It is not irritable or resentful. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 5. Or we can respond gracefully. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Ephesians 4, 32. Anger, danger. You see, there's a one word that separates anger and danger. That's letter D. Wow, how deep. <laughs> Let me share to you a beautiful story. Some of you might uh, you know you knew already about this story. Uh, Travel between flights at an airport, went to a lounge and bought a small package of cookies. Then she sat down and began reading a newspaper. Gradually, she became aware of a rustling noise. From behind her paper, she was flabbergasted to see a neatly dressed man helping himself to her cookies. Not wanting to make a scene, she leaned over and took a cookie herself. A minute or two passed, <clears throat> and then came more rustling. She, uh, he was helping himself to another cookie. <laughs> After a while, they came to the end of the package with one cookie left. But she was so angry, she didn't dare allow herself to say anything. Then, as if to add insult to injury, the man broke the remaining cookie into two, <laughs> pushed half across to her, ate the other half, and left. Still fuming, sometime later when her flight was announced, the woman opened her handbag to get her ticket. To her shock and embarrassment, there she found her package of unopened cookies. I smile at that story because it reminds me that we all have been angry when there was no need, right? Anger is a challenge. I just observed anyone can become angry. That is easy. But to be angry with the right person to the right degree, at the right time, and in the right way, that is not easy. How do you respond when you are angry? For some people, it is like this. They explode. 
They rant and rave. They spew phenom and anyone who comes near. They withdraw. Some people, they withdraw. They pout and sulk. They are masters of the silent treatment. Even among others, they are passive-aggressive. They get jobs at people with their actions rather than, than their words. Others, they use sarcasm. No, sarcasm extensively to subtly sub, express their anger. Others go to a third party. They do not talk with the person they are angry with, but they talk about that person to a third party. They deny they are very angry. Others, no. They deny they are very angry. They, they grew up probably in a household where it was not okay to be angry. Even though they are bursting with anger, they insist, Oh, I'm not. I'm not really angry. <laughs> Charot. You see, one thing I've noticed that among those lists, I believe I was a... Uh, uh, I'm guilty. I was guilty of all those things. You see, God says it is okay to be angry. The issue is, how do I respond to my anger? If there's one thing that uh, we need to learn from this morning is, you know, to answer the question, how do I respond to my anger? As we mentioned earlier, by God's grace, only by His grace, we can respond to anger in a godly way. Slowly, be slow to anger. A man of quick temper acts foolishly. Calmly, a soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word steers up anger. Lovingly, love is patient and kind. It is not irritable or resentful. Gracefully, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Can you imagine what would happen if we followed God's practical advice on anger? Can you imagine how many marriages would be saved? Right? How many parent-child relationships and friendships would be saved? Can you imagine the gift this would be to our children, our co-workers, and our friends? Can you imagine the difference in our own health? What if we consistently responded to anger in God's way? Slowly, calmly, lovingly, and gracefully. Oh, Father God, give us the grace to do this. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for your slow to anger attitude. But thank you for teaching us that uh, anger is uh, one letter away from danger. We thank you, Lord God, that um, you are the King of kings and Lord of lords, that you are worthy to be enthroned, Lord God, for this morning. I just want to lift up our hands to you and worship you and, uh, you know, just uh, uh, I'm speechless, Lord, of how, how, how am I supposed to describe a beautiful God like you? Lord, if there's anything that uh, we said, we asked, we thought of, we, we did, uh, we, we wish to repent to you this morning, Lord God. We want to ask for forgiveness. May your loving kindness, your mercy be upon us, Lord God. We thank you for all the beautiful things that uh, you shared to us, all the blessings, all the blessings that we're receiving and continue to receive in the future. Thank you, Lord God, for uh, you are a God that is one call away. We can ask favor for you, from you, and uh, we can pray for our world, for our country, church, neighbor, friends, relatives, and we can pray for ourselves. Lord, we remember in prayer uh, some world issues. Lord, we pray that uh, we, we, we go back to, that uh, you allow us to go back to normal as soon as possible. We don't want the new normal, Lord. We want the old normal. We, we pray for vaccines, Lord God, for this pandemic, this COVID-19. We pray that uh, you allow the world to jump back, jump back, Lord God, to its uh, feet, Lord, uh, uh, especially in the issue of economy. We pray for 
the United States of America, Lord God. It would be flu season. We pray, Lord, that uh, you help us, uh, you help our people to uh, to combat this flu. Uh, you help uh, us in our upcoming U.S. elections, Lord God. We pray for Trump and Biden, uh, and that they will be gentlemen, Lord God. Uh, in this election, we pray for the new U.S. Supreme Court judge. We pray for the Philippine issues, Lord God. There's a typhoon in southern Luzon, uh, Lord God. We pray for the victims and uh, we pray that uh, you, you comfort them and uh, provide for them. We pray, Lord God, for the unity in our Philippine Congress, that uh, they would be able to pass the budget for 2021. We pray for our president, Lord God, for his office, that he, uh, that he will continue to give him wisdom, Lord God, and good health. Lord, we pray for our, uh, our church issues. We pray for the Great Commission that uh, may all your uh, servants will focus on 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 this uh, on this task, Lord God, for us to uh, make disciples of all nations. We pray for all missionaries, Lord God, all over the world. Provide for them, protect them, keep them secured and safe, Lord God. And uh, anoint them, Lord God, as they preach the word. We pray for Church of the Nazarene, Lord God, for our general superintendents, our district superintendents, Lord God, and all the local pastors. We pray for our U.S. Canada region and uh, Filipino Zone churches, Lord God, here in uh in the U.S. Canada, we pray for the Metro Los Angeles Filipino churches, Lord God, that uh, you continue to use them mightily, Lord, to uh, to proclaim your gospel, especially to the Filipino ethnic group, Lord. We pray for all our birthday celebrators, Lord God, and I uh, pray that uh, you bless them, uh, uh, you give the desires of their heart, Lord God. Uh, and um, Lord, we just want to thank you. Um, we submit all these prayers, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll be reopening soon, November 1, save the date, Sunday, 9 a.m. So uh, it, it, it would be our first uh, in-person service uh, since we closed seven months ago last March. Uh, this will be also uh, an installation service uh, for the new upcoming leadership of our church. So if you can come, please join us or you can join us through uh, online. This is your LA First Filipino Church of the Nazarene. Uh, every Sunday, 9 a.m. at Wiley Chapel, 3401 West 3rd Street, Los Angeles, California. So lafeelness at gmail.com email. Uh, soon, coming soon, our lafilnas.org website. And uh, follow us LA, at lafilnas uh, on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So thank you, thank you. God bless you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to to be with you this morning, for giving us the, uh, the, the great honor of uh, leading you in our uh, daily morning prayer and power words uh, i'll see you tonight it's our uh, wednesday service our wednesday midweek service we'll be talking about uh, the books of judges and uh, ruth so see you god bless you bye